we are continuing with Saints of Raja. And the next story is about Durla Das Babaji. During the days when Manohar Das Baba lived and practiced bhajana on the bank of Govinda Kund in Govardhan, there lived on the northern bank of the Kunda Dulap Das Baba, who was also engaged in bhajana. He did Nama Japa all day and night and never left it even for a moment except for a short while when he slept. Manohar Das Baba once told his disciples how he conquered death by the power of Harinama. It was the time when plague broke out in Vrindavana. One day at noon, when Durlap Das was sitting under the shade of a neem tree and doing Harinama Japa, a gigantic but shadowy looking figure came and began to circumambulate, circumambulate, you say. Circumambulate. Circumambulate him. He was going around him and said, Who are you? Why have you come? I am Kaladuta, the regent of death. I have come to take you, replied the figure. I am ready. Take me, calmly said Durlabdas. You set aside the rosary and give up Harinama. I cannot take you while you are doing the japa of Harinama, said the Kala Dutta in helplessness. Durlabda said, I shall not give up Harinama. Then the Kala Dutta had to go back. In the evening, when Manohardas Baba came out of the cave. Durlap thus told him about it. Manohar Baba said, you were destined to die at this time. Death was inevitable. You have been able to ward it off on account of your bhajana. So this is this is a short story, but actually is talking about the power of bhajana and of power of harinam. How even Kaladuta, the servant of death of Yamaraj, the regent of Yamaraj, could not take take him. Yes. when his time has arrived. We, we can see uh, not just this, this uh, amazing story, but, but in the lives of many devotees. Uh, I, personally, I had some uh, people, uh, friends or persons, devotees that I knew or I know that actually are proof of this, how even karma can change when somebody becomes 
uh, a devotee or becomes devoted to their Ishtadev. It's like recently we met one lady in Radha Kund. Uh, her name is Mani Manjari. And she was um, diagnosed with cancer. And the doctors told her that she had only maybe a few months to live. But then, uh, if I remember correctly, she was asking uh, Krishna, uh, I think she, she said that she asked Krishna, please, uh, I want to do something for you. I want to do some seva, some, something very important, something like a mission to spread. Uh, this uh, spiritual consciousness and uh, if you want help me with this remove this disease and then by miracle the doctors were also surprised that she got cured in a very short time so a very short time passed and she was completely healthy and then after that, she dedicated her life completely. Now, I think she's moving to live or spending more and more time in Radha Kund. And this was, she said that this was special mercy for her, that her karma changed, actually, that she, she was meant to die at that time, but she actually got this mercy to live on just to finish more of her seva in this world. And that's amazing. And this, this is not only this example. There are many such examples where uh, people, devotees knew that by some uh, karma, they were supposed to finish their life at a certain time. But it has changed because of divine intervention because now they are meant to do something else, some more seva. It is all in the hands of Radha and Krishna that they decide, actually. In our case, Radhika decides when we are about to leave. It's not that, yeah, some great souls, they can decide themselves when they want to leave. When they think or they, they know that they have finished all their work here, then they leave. Also, one more thing in this story, we can see that Durlav Das Baba was not willing to stop his bhajana, even when death was there. I mean, the messenger of death. He never accepted to stop his bhajan. So also this is on one way our longing that we can be in bhajana 24-7. That we don't want to stop bhajana ever. Also, uh this is an encouragement for every one of us that we are always protected. And one who takes shelter of the holy name, he is protected, she or she is always protected. And I just remembered uh, that yesterday I read what happened to one devotee. He was telling, he's from Macedonia. And that's a story similar, but very unique. Uh, he happened that he was somewhere in the mountains. And it was very cold that he was practically freezing. And he was feeling that the moment of death was approaching. So he fell into something like a coma. And then he saw in his com comatic state, he saw 
like that he he could he could feel that he is a separate being not the body but a similar subtle being was inside of his body that was his subtle body and that he was observing what is going on from that perspective and suddenly he saw a staircase uh, in this subtle uh, dimension and two very strange looking uh, tall creatures took some ropes and wanted to pull him out of his body he was thinking that these are probably look like yamadutas and as they started pulling him like like a lightning like some explosion but without sound poof Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada appeared, like tall, like with, with his danda. And he said, he told, he told them, did I tell you, I, I tell you not him, not, don't touch him. It wasn't his time. And he, start, he took his danda and started uh, like uh, hitting all those uh, creatures and, and with one um hitting one creature left and the other one also and then all those ropes are destroyed and he said not him not it is not his time so this devotee was completely like overwhelmed oh my god Prabhupada came and he saved me now from the death i don't know this was so amazing and uh this is just i remember now because of this story how how such amazing things happen to devotees. Prabhupada saved him in his case. Mm -hmm. So amazing. I, I'm sorry, it, maybe I, I didn't say it really. Maybe I was too fast. If you could translate, I hope. But Okay, now, now we are reading another story. Uh, that's a uh, story about Anant Das Babaji. I'm not sure this is a, not the same. Not, uh, not, not the Anant Das Babaji. That's what do we know. <laughs> But another Anantadas Babaji. In Braja, there is a village called Karahal. The village is famous because it has the Samadhi of Vajranath, the grandson, grandson of Sri Krishna, on the bank of a pond in the village. There is a kuti surrounded by a cluster of kadamba trees and covered by creepers all over. The kuti is so thickly covered by the trees, the bushes and the creepers that the rays of the sun can hardly penetrate into it. It is an ideal place for the birds snakes and scorpions. It is hard to imagine that a man can live in it. But only a few years before, there lived in it a saint whose name was Anant Das. He lived undisturbed in the Kuti and practiced bhajan after taking initiation and vesh from Advaita Das Baba. Like Durbahidas Baba, whose mention we have already made, he also provides an excellent example of the conquest of Harinam over death. He was intensely devoted to Harinam. He did not let a moment pass without Harinam. 
He could not live without Harinam, even as long as he could remain without breath. He did Harinam job in the Kuti throughout the day. In the evening, only for a short while, he went out for Madhukari. Day after day, month after month, and year after year passed like this. Doing about four, four or five lakh harinam every day. It is said that he was so much dedicated to harinam that harinam had become his life and soul. And one could hear the sound of Harinam coming out of every pore of his body. <clears throat> One day, when he was returning from Madhukari and was about to enter his kuti, a cobra who was lying at the door hissed to prevent him from coming near. But how could he hear the hiss? He had no outward consciousness. He was totally absorbed in chanting Harinam and in the meditation of some Leela of Radha Krishna, manifested to him by Harinam in his mind. He went on and the cobra bit him. His outward consciousness was then revived. Was he disturbed by the bite? He was not in the least disturbed. On the other hand, he thought that she Anant Deva, the multi-faced cobra, a partial manifestation of Balaram, the elder brother of Krishna, had mercifully informed him through the bite that death was near so that he might collect all his energy and chant Harinam heartily before he died. So he kept aside the bag of Madhukari and sat down cross-legged and began to chant aloud. While chanting, he went into Samadhi. For two days and nights, he remained in Samadhi. On the third day, when his outward consciousness was revived, he found that he was perfectly healthy. There was no effect of or sign of the bite by the poisonous cobra. For the Vaishnavas, who are wholly dedicated to Harinam, life and death are meaningless. In the state in which they live, their connection with the body is nominal. Nominal means basic. Like basic connection, and this connection makes no difference to them. It means like their uh, connection with the body is a formality. <clears throat> connection and disconnection makes no difference to them. They can, of their own or as desired by the Lord, leave the body at any time, just as the traveler can leave the inn or the vacation house, or the bird can leave the nest. It may appear to us that they sometimes die on account of some disease, which is painful. The pain is to the body, not to them. They are perfectly at peace because their, their mind rests at the lotus feet of the Lord. Anantas Baba died of a disease on account of which his urine was blocked. When this happens to a patient, 
he has ex excruci excruciating. ex excruciatingly painful experience. But Baba did not suffer any pain. The villagers who loved and respected him immensely he insisted on arranging for his treatment. But all his life he had neither accepted anyone's service nor taken any medicine. He turned down their request by saying that where Harinam was present, no treatment or service of any kind was necessary. And he left the body chanting Harinam in perfect peace and happiness. So these are two short stories, but very intense. Maybe somebody would like to say something. Uh, we wonder how this story had inspired you, and do you have any um, thoughts or, or feelings to share with us? Actually, one thing is when I was reading, in my mind was going what Gurudev was answering me before uh, about seeing your Ishtadev in others and that everything is mercy mm -hmm. all circumstances are are mercy so this mahavava re remembered one story uh, uh mahavava remembered one story about uh, uh Mm -hmm. uh, about one king and his uh, minister. Yes. Yeah, and this minister had the habit to say for everything that happened that this is mercy, mercy God's mercy. So one day, this king went on a hunt. He was hunting and there was an accident. And during this accident, he lost a finger. And when he came back, his minister said, oh, this is mercy. And King got angry. He was very angry and put this minister in jail because of this. After some time, the King again went on a hunt and he, uh, he was captured by cannibals who wanted to eat him and they started to cut vegetables everything preparing for a meal that they will cook him but the chief in the village saw that he is missing a finger the king is missing the king is missing a finger yeah and they had a rule that they cannot eat anyone who is not whole. They cannot offer it they, to their goddess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so they they had to release him. And when and then he came home to his castle and he immediately went to prison to release his minister. And he was apologizing to him, oh, 
Now I understand that this was mercy, you know. But, but how, about how, how about you? What, how it was mercy for you that you went for many years in jail? And the minister said to him, for you, the mercy was that you didn't have finger and they didn't eat you because you were missing a finger. But you know, king, every time when you go to hunt, I am going with you usually. And if I would go with you, they would eat me. <laughs> yeah, so it was mercy for me that you put me in jail. <laughs> so in that way, it was mercy for both. So this is just one short story that, yeah, really we can see that mercy acts in many different ways. Uh, when even if seems bad, but it's mercy in the long run. Usually we, we can see that something was good for us or it was a mercy only in retrospect when we, when we go through the situation and when we look back after some time, then we can appreciate and we can understand that this was actually mercy. But while we are going through it, it's difficult to see many times because we are under stress or we are disturbed. But when we go through it, and what we can always see, even this in this time of distress, that we are somehow always guided, always protected. And then we, when we go through this situation, when we look back after some time, maybe even years, then we see, ah, if that thing didn't happen, we wouldn't have been in this place or we wouldn't have become this person who we are now. And then we are thankful to those so-called bad experiences. Because of those experiences, we are actually in this place where we are now. Maybe this experience was like a push, a kick, because we were going in some wrong direction and then had to come a kick to, to uh, push us back to the track where we are supposed to go on this other uh, side, yeah? So uh, this is the, how we see that everything is mercy. Sometimes not immediately, but in the long run, we usually realize that. Yeah, but, but Gurudev, what he was saying is actually that we... Try to see in everything mercy or kripa of Radik. But everything is mercy. Even if it looks, by our previous standards, it looks bad. So somehow to see the kripa in everything. And, it's, and then it bec the situations become easier also. Yeah. Because then, then we just accept what is going on as it is, usually we suffer not because of what happens, but because of our reaction to what happens. If, and then if I think that this is something terrible happening to me, I don't see it as mercy, then I feel much worse than if I was just looking at it as a situation, not uh, labeling it as a problem, but seeing this simply as a situation. And then, okay, this must be some kind of mercy. I don't know. And I let it go. I don't dwell on it too much. And when I don't dwell on it, that means I don't involve so much of my mental energy or whatever energy. Then um, if, I, if I stop doing that, then actually the divine intervention you know divine mercy divine help can also enter into this situation and solve it in the best way this is this is good point that like, if we are not in correct consciousness that we are thinking this of this as a mercy and that it helps us also to remember radica in the same time it is then more difficult in these situations to stay in our bhajan, to stay in 
Harinan or Bhajan, whatever, you know, what you were doing for Bhajan. So it is more difficult because our focus is then on, on, the, problem. on the problems. Yeah. And as Gurudev said, Radhika is so merciful. In her, with Radhika is what you think you what is that you what you get <laughs> you know that that if you think about something you will get with Radhika yeah mm -hmm. but Radhika will not uh, do bad to us that uh, we shouldn't be afraid <laughs> because Radhika always wants our best and she wants us that we come closer to her. So she will always make arrangements to move us in her direction. That's why we shouldn't be afraid. So sometimes some situation that seems bad can be a gentle nudge towards her. Like when we were sitting in Adakund and some small girls came there and bothering us i would say it started to, to yeah, disturb us disturb us taking uh, asking for money and first maybe the action is to get a little nervous come on what now but then we came to understanding that maybe we should move from here that maybe we need to go somewhere else that this radica sent them send them that we move and because we moved, because we went other place, some great things happened, some nice people we met in Radakund. So in that way, it was Radhika who sent them. This, this was our understanding. Yes, it's necessary to see, have the proper vision, because uh, if we just look at the surface, on the surface of things, there are so many disturbing elements, like, for example, in Radakun, you know, beggars, this, uh, this and that, you know, different pandas. pandas, different dirt, this and that. That's just the covering, the top covering. But when we, we really have to be conscious of this, that this is like a um, decoration or some kind of external illusion. And all of them are just puppets of Radhika. They are all uh, actually there, directed by Radharani. And then we have this vision, then we can actually become peaceful and just go with the flow of where we are directed in that particular moment. If something comes or somebody to disturb us at a certain place, that means, aha, now is the moment to get up and leave. She is sending us the sign that you were enough in this place, now you have to get up and to go somewhere else because probably you will have to meet somebody there. So be quick, don't stay here too long because that person might go away. And then when we went to this other place, we saw how perfectly different meetings were arranged. Some persons who gave us Mahaprasad, they just came to appear at this certain spot at this very moment. And then we took this Mahaprasad. We met another person who really needed this Mahaprasad at that very moment. And it was so interesting how these meetings occurred at a, spe a specific place, exact time, and it was all so much in tune with each other. It was so amazing. Mm. So beautiful. Rade, Rade. Rade. Can, I, can I share a little bit? I was yes. just reminded yes. about myself. <laughs> and when you talk about the king and the minister, I was just thinking about me. And I, I am a heart disease when I was born. It was a really heavy one, and now it's it's <laughs> stable. But uh, I'm still have a heart disease, and then but but it looks 
very bad because the baby born and baby is ah uh, maybe she cannot live until i don't know eight or ten or something it looks for the parents really bad and for me maybe i don't remember but it's not a good thing in a material vision but then when i get really get older and then around my age now and then now i have my job because of my heart disease because in japan and there is some chance for the uh, disability people and then to get easier to get a job and then i could get a job and working from home and then you know maybe many i know i can work from india or vrindavan and then you know it looks i don't know first 30 year or 40 year looks very bad because my body is so weak and then yeah i cannot earn nice money but now i can live almost half a year in vrindavan and then it looks really nice i don't know what happened in the end but looks right now is very nice now there Thank you. Thank you. So somebody else wants to share? Maybe some event in their life that showed this the mercy, the mercy you know? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh how do you experience Radhika's mercy in your own life, everyday life? Don't be shy, please say. We would be so happy and I'm sure everybody would love to hear your own experiences. It can, doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Those are little things, you know, that we notice every day. And those little things make us inspired more and more. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for listening today and I hope you got something from, for yourself from today's sharings and both sharings actually that we, we can add both sh not sharings both the, both stories that we read they were both connected to the power of Harinam mm. And now we can take this as an inspiration for our own bhajan, our own harinam, so that we connect even more and more deeper in our harinam practice. Uh, not because we want the protection from death, we are actually completely uh, under the protection of Radhika, who will decide where to go, how and, and in what circumstance. But this is actually inspiration for all of us that to show how Harinam is so powerful, not just for anything, but even in the case of death. Of course, our aim to connect to our Radhika, to our Ishtadev, Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. Thank you.